here it is. The D-Link DIR855L. Uh, this is the top of the line D-Link router. This is the one that has everything. Every, every little thing, it, uh, it's, uh, it's got dual band, three antenna MIMO, it's IP uh, version six enabled, and the most intriguing thing is the smart beam. Uh, let's t on the side here, they have some stuff here. So basically they uh, talk about, it's a cloud router, and we'll find out more about that. Now the intelligent bandwidth sounds really good. This is the whole thing with the, uh, supposedly it'll, it'll uh, 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 use beam forming to adjust the coverage to suit where your devices are, increasing the signal strength for both transmit and receive. Amplified coverage, so it's a high powered unit. Media sharing is a really good one. It has a USB port, so you can plug in a, a large USB drive and you can share files on your router. That's a, a nice feature too. And blazing wired speed, it's got giganet, or gigabit uh, routing. It's got a four port gigabit switch, which is actually very nice and, and the cloud remote access. Well, we'll see here, these are all really good features. Well, when I said it was the top of the line, I guess I was uh, a little bit wrong because here's the, the Cloud Router 3000, uh, the DIR855L here, and they do have uh, one that's a uh, uh, 5700, which is I think basically the same thing with uh, the AC, you know, the 802.11 AC standard. And uh, that, that would be nice for newer things, uh, but you'd certainly need to have an AC compatible uh, networking card to, to do that, but uh, you know maybe that'd help out in the fu future. Okay, I just opened the box. There's a little pamphlet here, a quick install guide, and a, a GPL code statement. Ooh, I, I wonder if this thing has uh, any open source software, like the Linux-based uh, Tomatoes or DDWRT. Uh, it's got a, uh, a blue uh, network cable, a power cord. Uh, it's fairly large, but it'll only take up one spot. And here's the, the actual router itself. Well, let me get a better look at that out of the package. Okay, fresh out of the box. I removed it from this little piece of plastic on the bottom. And uh, you can see it's it's uh, seems to have a shiny black plastic, uh, so they have it covered with uh, some sort of a protectant to make sure that it doesn't get scratches or fingerprints over it here. And uh, on the back, it's completely round. This is the top, this is the bottom. Now on the back, I don't know if you can see, but you can see there's at the top, there's a UPS, uh, a USB, excuse me, USB connector where you can put yourself a thumb drive for, for attached storage, network attached storage. Uh, a WPS button so that you can uh, link to, to WPS uh, connected things and share a password automatically. Four gigabit uh, ports, four port switch, and then the, the yellow one on the bottom is the WAN uh, uh, connector for the internet uh, where you hook up your, uh, your cable modem or DSL modem. And then there's a power switch so you can turn it on and off, which is a a nice feature. I mean, I would never want to turn it off, but some people might want to turn the router off. And it has a uh, a, 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 a switch where it comes out when it's off, and then you push it in, it locks in. And then here's where the power adapter is. So let's look a little bit more. Okay, I peeled the pieces of plastic off, and I made two discoveries. They seem to have some uh, buttons that light up on the front, and uh, I'll talk about, I'll show you those more after I plug it in. And it seems to have a sticker that can stick onto the router with the default password. And it seems to have a different default password for uh, every router. And uh, I guess that's a, a, an added security feature. Now one more thing on the, the password, along with that sticker they gave me that I could paste on something, they, they're, it's, it's, it's on the bottom. There's also the password and the SSIDs here. And then they've also given me a quick configuration card that has the passwords and the SSIDs. And basically they want you to go to http uh, colon slash slash dlinkrouter.local 
or go http colon slash slash 192.168.0.1 in order to uh, configure this thing. So let's give that a try. Okay, I plugged everything in. We're connected at one gigabits per second to the, uh, and uh, that looks good. This is, uh, when I typed in the, the web browser, I, I typed in uh, 192.168.0.1, but you could have typed in that other thing there. And here we are, and uh, uh, the username is admin, and the password is blank initially, but of course it's good practice to, to change that. And uh, we have firmware version 1.01, .01, and I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is look for new firmware, because that's always the first thing you do when you get a new router. And we'll start with the, the best uh, factory uh, firmware that they have. And, uh, you yeah. know. Okay, I'm on the firmware update uh, tab over here, and I click check now for new firmware. And it says this firmware is the latest version. Version 1.01 .01 is the latest version. I, I don't believe it. So let's see what D-Link has to say. Oh, well here's the, the product page for, uh, for this thing. And they say that the latest version is 1.01. .01. So uh, uh, apparently it fixes WPS fixes uh, the setup wizard and uh, helps out with the, the my D-Link registration process. So I guess we got the latest firmware. Since we're at the, the website, here's their uh, smart beam uh, little infographic. So instead of just having a regular router where everything's all the same speed with two little wimpy antennas coming out here and, and you can bear, and these things all get weak signals, this thing with six antennas and amplified uh, uh, transmit will uh, uh, beam form. So you can see how they're showing how it senses where this device is and then it adjusts the phase, phases of the six antennas to where it sends a signal there. Then it sends a signal there and sends a signal there. So apparently it's supposed to uh, play around uh, with the phase on the antennas to, to do beam forming to actually increase the signal strengths so that all these devices have five bars. What, you know, really looks good on paper. Let's give it some tests. So let's take a look at the, the, uh, the menus that you have here. So is, if you notice along the top, they've got uh, five, five selections. You can go setup. When you're on setup, you've got all the rest of these uh, items over here. It says internet, wireless settings, network settings, media settings, storage, IP6, uh, my uh, D-Link settings. You can go to advanced, you can do all of your port forwarding, uh, quality of service, networking filter, access control, website uh, filters, inbound filters, firewall settings, routing, advanced wireless, uh, protected Wi-Fi setup, advanced network. You can create a guest account, which is a nice thing. You can set up a, an IPv6 uh, firewall and an IPv6 routing should you want to enable that, because this, this is an advanced router and it has those uh, capabilities. Uh, go to the tools, you can do the admin, we, are, we, need, we definitely need to put a new password in here. And uh, you know, they have a time server that you connect to, so it has automatic and, and time, uh, logging, email setting system, the firmware update, we showed you that earlier, dynamic DNS, system check, scheduling, We'll have to look at that a little further. And then they have uh, uh, on the, the status uh, tab, you can take a look at the device info. And this is just the way it is, uh, uh, f fresh out of the box, nothing changed. It went to, to channel six. And, uh, and then the, uh, for the five gigahertz band, it goes to channel 44. It seems to be up and going. Uh, for status, they have uh, log statistics, internet sessions, routing, wa wireless, uh, IP6, IP6 routing. Now these are statuses which are different than the, the, the menu you saw before the tools where you change the stuff. And then we click on support and they seem to have a whole bunch of help here. And uh, yeah, this is just a whole bunch of help. So you notice how these help menu has the same entries that we have along the top here. So you can go to each one of these help, 
the help menu and you get more help with any one of uh, these various different tabs by, by looking over here to the support. So that's not too bad. Okay, here's the results. I've got the two routers next to each other. It's the two bottom routers. The one that says D-Link, uh, you know, 7C, whatever, whatever, is the new one we're reviewing. And this other one here on the very bottom, even though it says D-Link AP is actually an old uh, uh, Linksys WRT54G. So just a normal old uh, non-MIMO uh, single uh, transmit, single receive router that you could probably buy for $20 used versus the top of the line D-Link. And survey says, well, the, the D-Link has a 57% signal strength and my old, uh, old reliable has a 40% signal strength. So there is an increase in signal strength. Uh, one caveat, uh, the network card I'm using right here is just a, a G network card. It's uh, not a, an N or any kind of a, a MIMO card. And that, that would make a big difference, I'm sure, uh, in connecting up, up here. We're just talking uh, uh, 802.11G speeds. You know, we're not talking N or anything uh, higher than that. So uh, the good news is, is uh, the, the new D-Link works, and it does have stronger signal. And, uh, you know, it's not uh, 100%. And by the way, all the rest of these are just my neighbors, and they're all you know, like 100 yards away in various different directions. So uh, I, 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 I would guess this is good news. I mean, stronger signal is better. Okay, I think I've kind of got a handle on this network attached storage thing, or the, uh, they call it the media server. So uh, I logged in, and I'm uh, on the setup tab, and I go to storage. Now, there's really not much you have to do here, but I'll click on the SharePort mobile manual setup. There's a wizard that you could do, but it does all the same stuff here. So basically, you want to make sure enable SharePort web access is enabled. And then you can, uh, if you notice it, uh, for the access port, it's 8181. And you can add new users. And uh, you can see right here the number of devices. This is uh, right down here is the device I add. It's the USB device and it says it's like a 30 gigabyte. And it's, here's the lame part. You actually got to take the device out and you got to copy over all of your uh, media files and documents and music and all the rest of those things to the media device and then plug it back in. So uh, I was really upset that I couldn't upload to it. And then uh, I made a, a, a user. I, I said I, I made the user NAS. And, uh, and I selected, I browsed to, to the USB device, and that still didn't work. Apparently, it's got to be the access path has to be the, the backslash. And when I did that, everything kind of worked. So let me just show you what you do here. So we'll just open up a, a web browser, and we'll go to uh, 192.168.0.1 colon 8181. And so when I do that, I come here, let me just type admin. The admin password is still blank. We'll log in, and then it'll categorize all of your stuff. So if you, if I click on movie, you can see all the movies I have, and you can play them from the web access. But uh, like I say, I was just a, a little, uh, a little. Di well, okay, never mind. I guess I can do it. I, I can do an upload. Okay. Now that I logged in as root, so I clicked up in this upper corner here. And it says access my device. Here's the device. And uh, I guess you can add new stuff here. So I guess it's not that bad. Uh, it was just a little, a little hard to figure out. And for some reason, the help didn't actually have a, a, a setting for this. It's, it's a little lame, but I guess it works. Okay, here's what the router looks like when it's on. You can see the, the two green lights on the front there. And uh, see it from the back, I got a uh, uh, thumb drive connected in here. Oh, I don't know, it looks pretty nice, seems to do the job.